Hey guys, I am super excited to do this video because pulling up right now is Jay, who is, uh, who is flooring the Mustang, who is towing from Washington on the West Coast to Duluth, Minnesota. So you're going from what part of Washington? Um, just north of Portland yeah. area, all the way up to Duluth. And how far Minnesota. is that, Jay? Um, because I took the southern route, it's like 2,200 miles. Yeah, and what, what he means by the southern route is it would be easier just to go kind of direct as a crow flies, but because of charging infrastructure, right, you had to go down and go through uh, like uh, Utah, uh, yes, Wyoming. Yep, I went through Salt Lake City. Yeah. Um, and then followed I-70. So. All right, well, let me let me first do a walk around of your car and then we'll get back to it. So let me show you what, what he's towing. Uh, so this is obviously a Ford Mustang uh, Mach-E. Uh, it is uh, one of the newest uh, breeds of uh, electric cars. Uh, and Jay, how big of a trailer is this? Um, it's a seven or six by 12. Okay. With a seven, six and a half foot height and weighs about 1300 pounds. All right, so about 1300 pound trailer and uh, Jay was telling me off camera that you've got it filled with, uh, we don't have to open it, you've got it filled with basically a table and furniture. And tiles and all sorts of goodies. So how much do you guess, take a guess at how much you think you're towing. I feel like I'm towing probably mm, around 2000 ish pounds okay. or yeah. so. Yeah. And, and then the car is full so then, you know, I've, it's quite a bit of weight. Yeah, and then the other thing about the trailer, of course, is it is not the most aerodynamic uh, <laughs> trailer in the world. No. If, if you look at it, it dwarfs the Mustang. Uh, I still feel saying, still feel weird saying that Mustang. Yeah, it dwarfs the Mach E, uh, and it's pretty much like uh, towing a brick into the wind. So in this video, uh, what I really want to get to is, first of all, uh, how does uh, the Mach E tow? Uh, what's it like towing across country uh, uh, and uh, how much are you you know spending on that uh, and is it uh, cheaper than like doing it with you know a regular car or truck so first of all why'd you buy a Mach-E? Um, so I bought a Mach-E because yeah. I kind of wanted a change of pace yeah um, with the Mach-E I just was like oh this would be kind of exciting to jump into Ford's first electric car because I had originally started with the uh, um, Ford Mustang 2014 with the V6 and I was pretty impressed by its capabilities with the manual um, and then I was like well it'd be cool to actually get a new uh, Mach-E especially if I can get some of that tax credit back and I just wanted to experience um, like one of America's first electric cars from the mainstream car company. So how, how much was MSRP on, on the Mustang? Um, the MSRP is about 56 okay. on the Mach-E. And you, how much did you get seven and a half back federally? Yeah. There's a potential yeah. for that. It's okay. kind of based on your income. Yeah. yeah. But did you get it? I don't know yet. Oh, you don't know. You got to figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So it was fifty. So this is fifty six k. That's yep. a that's a that's a big amount of money. And what's yeah. the, so it must be the one with the big battery. So how big is your battery? Um, it's the eighty nine kilowatt, kilowatt hour. Battery. And can you use the whole thing or only a portion of it? I can use the whole, whole thing. thing. Oh, so Ford lets you do like uh, let you choose how much energy you can put in the battery and how much you're using. Uh, I think so. I'm yeah. still trying to learn their Ford Pass app and how okay. all the intricacies of charging works. I'm new to electric cars, Fair enough. so I'm jumping I, I, in on it. So. I bet you they're not letting you use the entire battery. There's probably some some reserve because it's oh. bad for, you know, the car. To... Oh, I, yeah, I went all the way to zero. So I'm Did you? Aware. Yeah, I went to where the 12 volt died. When was this? On the way out here? Yeah. What happened? Tell me. So I That's was, crazy. Yeah. Um, I... I thought I had just enough range to get there, yeah. and I was getting up to the um, um, where you come off the interstate. Yeah. So then I got to the stop sign. I was like, if I roll through, I'll probably get to my charging station. But I was like, I have to be a citizen, you know, upstanding citizen. So you didn't roll and I, through. And I stopped. So then I was stopped there, and the car just said, I'm done, and put on the turtle mode and just sat there. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I can't go anywhere. So, so I had to call uh, the um, roadside assistance through the Ford app. And it took a few attempts for them to kind of understand what I meant by battery. Okay. So that was so, kind of so, fun. So you couldn't like put it in, let's, let's go over here. Let's, let's go this way. So you couldn't put it in like neutral and push it and unhook? No, no? It, it locks into park. Okay. Um, probably a safety mechanism. Yeah. Because if it has no power, there's no, it's just... So there's yeah. nothing. So what happened? Did they come and tow you, or? Yeah, I yeah. ended up getting towed about an eighth of a mile to where I was going to be. Charging. Oh, that's so close, man! So I sat there for like an hour or so, 
an hour or two waiting to get it figured out. But we got it figured out. It wasn't cold or too cold. And looks looks, really looks like somebody's. Uh, that's our new Jeep dealership. Looks like somebody's test driving a brand new uh, Jeep. <laughs> oh, well, that's a pretty color. That is a pretty Indeed. color. All right, let's let's go over here so we get out of the way. I don't want to run you over. So, okay, so tell me, how many miles is it from uh, where you're going uh, to from where you left? So it is about, um, it's somewhere between, depending on the routes, yep. it can average between 1,800 to about 2,200 miles, depending on the route that I take. That's a long way. It, it's a long, long way, way, especially... Um, with the charging, towing a trailer, you are getting um, not the best kind of fuel yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Economy. So what's the range out of the box if you weren't towing? Three hundred. It it really varies. Yeah. Um, something I'd want to talk to Ford about how that all works. Yeah. But it varies probably between about one hundred and eighty miles to about three hundred and ten. Okay. The range I've seen. So it depends um, on the weather condition, the weather and how cold it is, yeah. obviously. Yeah, no, I've done this trip there and back. This will be the fourth. Wow, four times. You've done it four times? Yeah, so the first time was really cold. Yeah. Because I didn't turn on any of the heat, right. and I'm freezing. And then I discovered like RV places that I could fill up. Okay. And all right. So yeah. so so officially it's like 300 miles. But what happens when you're towing? So it it goes down to what? How much? How much? Um, how much you get? Depending on your speed. Yeah. There's so many variables. All right. Let's let's say yeah. you're doing. Let, let's say it's warm like it is yep. today. You're doing. Let's say 65 just to be on the safe side. Maybe 70. How far can you go between charging? And I, I get it. You don't want to go down to zero because that takes forever and you don't want to charge beyond like 80 percent because that right. takes forever yep yep um so i usually with the car i've noticed when towing yeah. is that i can get like 120 miles that's not bad yeah so about a third a third to a half depending on yeah. the hills okay um what really can uh make or break your trip is what actually happened to me coming through one of the passes okay. getting up to the top at like eleven thousand feet yeah because if you don't have the range to get to the top yeah it doesn't matter that going downhill you don't use anything because you have to get to the top did you get stuck no oh. i was down to seven percent <laughs> seven mile range and i got to the top and then i jay jay jay, jay jay you are a poster child for range anxiety i mean, <laughs> I mean that is crazy dude all right all right so between 100 and 120 miles of range uh so uh how long does it take you to charge back up to 80 uh, percent right uh you it depends on the charger yeah but, so, okay so um, usually it, it's like between your like 30 to minutes to an hour so so they're yeah. different if you're using ultra america because that's the most prominent station right yep. you've got 150 kilowatt hour chargers all the way up to 350 you know what the top uh uh rate that the mach -E can soak up electricity is uh the, what's this what you what have you seen what have i've seen yeah. up to 150 to 175 uh, kilowatts yeah kilowatt per hour so, so if, if you're doing 150 that's gonna basically mean an hour you'll put on 150, 150. so, in so about a half, half hour, hour you'll get full, yeah yeah yeah, yep. yeah that's that's pretty straightforward um but you never always get that right in our experience no. you pull up to some and you plug it in and you're like hey why is this thing only putting out 70 kilowatts right and it can depend on your car how your car is feeling I know that sounds strange, no it's true it, it it, there's a handshake that takes place when you obviously start the charging process and then the car says this is as much energy as I can take and it depends on the state of the battery yep. the temperature of the battery how fast it can cool the battery there's just a lot and of course it also depends on the charger right right well and you're you got to look at it as driving like a computer this literally is driving a computer and I don't know what kind of propriety on their AI they use but yep. it has to adapt and figure out how to power manage and battery manage and there's a lot that goes into so would it be this. fair to say when you're towing you're driving for like two hours and then you're taking a break for like a half hour to, yeah, to an hour. hour and a half to two hour drive okay. time if you get it up to around 80 82 okay. yeah and then you do a half hour to an hour stop but so, that's only when you're towing and most people aren't doing to, cross country yeah. so, so what, what do you do in that time what, what, when you're like uh, you oh, read, maybe you watch. spend too much money <laughs> because I'll stop because it's like Targets or Walmarts or whatever, and I might spend money on it. Okay, and it's like oh. Well, All right, and, and the other yeah. thing, that... and then also, if I may, yeah, I've discovered the just 
building connections with people. Oh, you know, kind nice. Of the things we've lost a lot with social media is just stopping at a coffee shop and then talking and end up being hours and missing the the original appointment you had. You know, it's like, but you, it's such a neat experience because then you can bring that joy and happiness to other people in times where we're really kind of uneasy about things so. that's really cool jay i was watching this um german tv uh news on pbs and they were talking about the charging stations that they have in europe right now and they're these giant charging stations right they're like full-on uh truck stops except for electric vehicles and they have coffee shops and there is like a nomadic community of people who gather and then kind of talk about you know their experience and then kind of get to know each other it is a cool thing uh and i think um it's one of the things that most people don't think about when like cross country tripping. I mean, obviously a lot of people are like, Hey, that's a really painful way to tow. But then if you do meet interesting people and you form a community, that's pretty cool. Have you met some of the same people? Uh, I have not actually. <laughs> okay. Um, I, except for the RV place that I stayed at in Montana, I think it was a uh, Brodus. Yeah. I stayed there and I went there twice and it was nice because I was able to charge it and then I could continue on my way because you know, the infrastructure isn't quite there, but getting there. All right, now, um, Ford has a thing called, uh, well, it didn't work initially, but it's supposed to work now, plug and charge, right? Where you're supposed to be able to just pull up to the charging station, plug it in, and the car automatically starts charging. Have you been using that? Um, so I have not. Yeah, so do you, you have yeah. to, like, use your uh, I use app? my phone. I'll use the app. Yeah. Like, if I use Electric by America, yeah. I'll use my phone, and then I'll tap, and it will connect and do its thing. Um, it was working in the beginning, but when you turn off like connective, it connected, connectivity, yeah. connectivity on that Ford, it kind of screws it up a little bit. It doesn't really like not to have that, um, consistency on the con connectivity. And then, um, have you been kind of keeping track of how much money you're spending? Uh, you know, how much is yeah. a typical charging session? And it varies obviously because... Uh, there's different utilities across the country and then, like here in Colorado we have a tax on top of it so how much would a typical I usually, charge like it's about 20 bucks 20 bucks yeah so 20 bucks to go 120 miles Ooh. yeah right. but you know if you were towing with a truck you'd be also using yeah a lot. I mean yeah. you got to think about if you're towing with the truck you're getting like 10 yeah exactly and, and it's just as bad but I mean you know the way I look at it what this car does great is in town it just kills it in town and you know electric electric cars have a long ways to go but being able to just plug into your house and a lot of communities you may be at eight cents a kilowatt or 11 cents a kilowatt and it's not so bad i mean obviously you're spending a decent amount on your big trips but that's just happens with any vehicle so, well, so. Well, when we were talking you said you're getting how much per uh kilowatt out per kilowatt what's the range what's the number one um, i normally yeah. what i've seen yeah. with this car consistently yeah. is i've seen it between 1.2 to 1.6 1.7 and then when i don't have the trailer kilowatts per mile yep kilowatts or miles per kilowatt. Miles, i always get yep. that wrong miles per kilowatt okay and then when i don't have the trailer yeah. i can see Usually, I get between like 2.8 to 3.5. So, it can get better. So it's just, just, varies. Yeah. just for a point of reference, when we had our Tesla, uh, that was usually around in the threes. Uh, and now we have the little Mini Cooper SE, and that's in the fours, but it's a much smaller car. Well, I mean, people have got to realize this car weighs like 5,000 pounds. pounds. Yeah. It's a tank, <laughs> and it's Ford's first attempt. So, you got to give credit where credit is due. Tesla's been doing it for years and this Ford literally just said here you go and it's about as good as you can really get or imagine all right first attempt, so, so, so how long do you have to plan to go from you said you've done it four times now so to go from Washington uh, near Portland you said right yeah all the way to Duluth how long of a how long how long uh, you know is that how many days I guess um it can vary um my average is usually like four four to five days give okay. or take because you got to stop you got to rest and i've done it where i go through the night but it's just you know that's tough it's tough yeah and a lot of times i'm going like 55 because i just i wasn't sure with the trailer and everything and that's you know that's yeah. the other thing we found especially when towing uh the 
it's almost exponential in some ways, right? So the difference between 55 and 75, the amount of energy you're using is, is very significant. It's a drastic difference. Yeah. But I mean, going down a hill, like going from, uh, say, Colorado Springs down to Denver, yeah, you can get like 1.8 to 2 because you're going downhill, even at the high highway speeds with a trailer, which I go is pretty impressive um, that you're able to do that. But I don't see any Teslas pulling around trailers. So. I know, it's weird, you don't. So you don't I, see. I might be one of the first uh, Mach-E's to tow a trailer. Uh, especially but. a big one like that. Is, is the Mach-E pretty stable? I mean, 5,000 pounds. Yeah, I good. don't, I don't hardly. Let's see, just, your set, let's see your setup, let's see how you did your, you don't feel the trailer? No, I really don't feel the trailer. It's a basic, I believe it's called Eco Hitch. I yeah. got it um, in Kent, okay. um, Washington, which is just south of Seattle. And then I went down and I got um, the interstate trailer. And all I do is I just, it's just your standard ball. You hook it up and then she's good to go. And yeah, I mean, the great thing about electric cars is they've got tons of uh, torque, right? And yep. towing is all about torque. Uh, so right. uh, did this come with a tow package? Did, did it? No. Um, oh, you had to put it. Oh, you got a seven pin connector too. Yeah. Four and a seven pin. I'm impressed, Jay. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, it's not technically rated. Um, for towing okay i was so wondering i thought it was ford sees this <laughs> they'll they'll know it can tow it can tow so so are you tow. are you saying that it's technically not rated to tow anything is that is that that's what? correct <laughs> but i've seen on like forums yeah. that people in europe have towed with it and they said like oh they don't have it in the u.s because ford thought people in the u.s don't with their Mach-E. Oh, so so who did the who did the hitch for you? Um, Eco Eco Hitch. Okay, and they put that they put it on, and then they did the wiring. I take it they probably just did the wiring to the tail lights, right? The usual way, uh, and then is a seven pin. Is there a is there a, I, did you did you do a, a brake brake control? I, I don't know if you need one. Or, I I didn't do a brake control, control but yeah. I just wanted the ability to have either four or seven pin because different trailers have different pins, yeah. and I just rather not have the adapter and just be able to switch yeah 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 how, so, how much was how much was the hitch install how much did you pay for that um it was right around 1200 okay All and right. that was um u.s made stainless steel hitch so yeah so I, I have to say i mean if you've done this trip you're saying four times there and back or four times both? four so two times this will be my second time there so let's say you're going to be towing five thousand miles how's the how's the vehicle holding up i haven't had any issues, issues yeah yeah no how um, many miles you got on it I think it's about 12 and a 12? half now. Any, any issues at all? Did you have to, anything, nothing? No, it, it does pretty well. I haven't noticed anything. Um, this is the first time towing, but. I, I would think yeah. that like. Um, the brakes don't even work yeah, hardly. I was gonna say, I was gonna think like going down, let's say from the top of the Eisenhower Pass. Uh, I don't use brakes. You don't use brakes, really? No. Wow. Um, somehow Ford did a really good job with their motors. And if you let off the gas when you're in bridled mode, that's what I drive in is unbridled mode it doesn't use the brakes it that's incredible goes down the hill and cruise and then i noticed that can i open it up yeah are you okay ahead. i noticed that you also uh is this that you also have it full of other you know it's it's not just not just what's in the trailer but what is in the back of the uh <laughs> yeah. vehicle so you get this thing loaded down uh it's pretty amazing tell me uh how long have you had the car now um since june -ish. Oops, sorry. Uh, the car is a bit temperamental with its beeping. Okay. If you are like two feet away, yeah, it will just uh, lock itself. So, because, so you've had it yeah. uh, four months, five months. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, give or take. Yeah. And um, would you recommend it to other people? Yeah, I, I don't see any real issues with it. Um, it's kind of nice because the base price gets you in at forty. Yeah. And I just and I take yeah. and it's the uh, four X right, so it's a four. So yeah, you got all wheel drive. drive. Yeah. yeah. And you, it does really good on snow. Have you had it in snow? Yeah, it doesn't, ice does not hardly affect its traction. And also, um, I had a case where I was just in Denver and I was going down the hill. Yeah. And everybody, it turned into, everybody was stopped. And the car, the brakes just locked down and I could hear maybe the trailer was just sliding on the tires because the car was just hunkered. Wow. And it just gripped as if it wasn't there wasn't a couple thousand pounds behind it but, well you know you're yeah. a truck guy right you know i mean sometimes about towing it's not just how much it can tow but it's the weight of the vehicle that's towing it right. and with the batteries you've got this low center of gravity yep. um because the batteries are placed you know they're, they're in the they're, they're down yeah, yeah they're right there, there. Yeah. and if people haven't seen it there's like an eighth to a quarter inch thick sheet of steel that's underneath yeah. yeah that protects the batteries 
But what I really like about like with the Mach-E is it has a decent amount of height, so it can match most trailers and the wheel line is all the same across from the trailer to the car. So all that force is pushed evenly across really well. And have you had any issues with trailer sway? Um, if I try to go slower around corners, yep. um, but if there's a lot of bumps, I can see the trailer kind of move around. And in the beginning, I was a bit more um, worried about it, but as long as you're careful, it's the tw there's like no sway. And I was I was worried about the fact you don't have towing mirrors, but it looks like it's not that fat. Like you can you can no, actually see those, around. No, those yeah. mirrors do great, okay. and um, it's kind of cool with the backup camera because it's, you can see the hitch. And what I like about um, with the Mach E. Yeah, where's the camera? Is it down? It's gonna be here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be like, right here. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you're looking down. Yeah, and it's yeah. a wide angle yeah. lens, so you see the whole area plus the 360, so it can capture a bit here. Um, but also what I like about the Mach-E is you get, like, you can pretty much be at a right angle with the trailer with this car because there's so much room, unlike you're normally with a... I can see that, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you know, it's got a lot to, to do. Of course, you don't have things like Ford's backup assist, but I, I take it you've gotten pretty good at backing up trailers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a little weird on the short wheelbase, but yeah. I mean, it's... It's something to get used to, I guess. And uh, with all that torque, I, I, you know, this is a zero to 60 time, probably well in the five second range or even less. Do you find that still as quick? Because, I mean, you've got all this torque I, with the trailer. I try not to Go push too quick? it yeah. um, with the motors because yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm not Turn, like, like, injuring them. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because it's just, I, Ford set this car for a certain purpose and I want to make sure I live within that purpose because it can tow, but I'm not gonna like be, you know, flooring it all the time with the trailer. I'd rather just build up to speed so then the motors aren't getting overworked. And we've, we've, we've been having a long conversation, but there's a couple other questions I think I need to ask. How comfortable is it as a long uh, haul car? Is, oh, are the seats comfortable? Yeah, it's, yeah? it's comfortable. Um, I have no issues, you know, listening to audiobooks, it works well. I was looking at the car. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. I was curious, yeah. But uh, it, it, the sound system is really good in it. I mean, you can hear the road noise if you want. It's really kind of crazy with electric car because you can hear the hitch that you normally don't really hear as much because cars have engines. Right. So you hear the engines. So, so you, hear, you hear all the squeaks and rattles. Yeah, so I can hear all the <laughs> everything little hitch good. things. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go back here one more time and we'll wrap this up. Um, do you use a frunk too? Do you? Yeah, I, yeah? I do. I yeah. put um, like water in and stuff like that okay. in there. Um, I was gonna offer to show the frunk. Yeah. Because it's kind of a pop cool it open. Thing, so. Yeah, let's watch. Let's see it. I'd love to see it. Pop open the frunk. Now Ford did this thing where there's a drain in the frunk. Yes. Right. So yep. so you you could put like wetsuits, I guess. Yeah. Or Coca Cola products. I, mean, I don't know. Oh yeah. So you, this so, is kind of your fridge. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. That makes so, sense. Yeah. That's actually it holds quite a bit. It really does when you take the dividers out, and there is these cup holders right here. Yeah. If you see that. Yeah, I can see them, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well if you just want to throw some things up here. All right, and, and last question. Uh, you know, a lot of the um, charging stations aren't set up for towing. So do you ever have to unhook? Yeah, I've unhooked probably more times than I can count <laughs> okay. on this trip right. because I had to keep... Because you don't want to go in. Where's the charging for? It's on the side, right? It's right here. Okay, yeah, it's right there. Which isn't bad, so you could kind of... It's in the front, so you can kind of come in, but then you, you're sticking way out. Yeah, and a lot of the charging stations are not quite designed for where the charging port on this is. They're more designed for, say, the Teslas or the Leafs I've seen. Because they're like perfect for the leaf because the leaf is right here. Yeah, the leaf is in the nose. And the Tesla's Tesla's in, in the, the back, back, yeah. So you back right in. Yeah. But with Ford, it's you have to get around the hood. Yeah, and then then if you're using the Electrify America station, it's a little confusing because they've got two uh, cables, right? But it's just one charger with two cables. Yeah. It's the, and people think that they can use both of them, but you can't. You can only and, use the one. And have you found uh, that... Um, have you ever found a charging station where you had to wait because it's been full or is it, are they still mostly empty? Mostly empty, yeah. but there's not that many of them and the market share that electric cars have is very minuscule compared to what gasoline or diesel vehicles have. So you have maybe, you know, a few hundred charging stations with four 
chargers on it, but if you have a lot more people, you still have that 30 minute charge. Well, that starts to add up pretty quick and you need practically to have um, charging stations every um, every block, just like a regular gas station. Yeah, I'm always amazed that they aren't putting more charging stations. So Electrify America obviously um, came out of the Volkswagen settlement and they yep. have their stations mostly in Walmarts, which is nice because then you can go get food, get yep. drink. Uh, but it would be smart, I think, for gas stations to start installing them. When we tr road trip from California, uh, to, to here, uh, there was one time we stopped at a gas station and it made perfect sense because they've got, you know, all the food, all the yep. snacks, you know, all the drinks. Um, so, And I've seen a few places that do have a charging with the gas station, but some of these places don't have that much space yeah. where they're having you like park and it's, you know, just like quick trips could really and have you, take advantage and have you found like when you spend the night you go to a hotel that has a level two charger and then plug it in overnight or do you go to like like a koa where you could use their chargers what do you do normally um i really plan ahead uh depending on the trip yeah and if there is a like a um a hotel with the charger then i would charge but usually i'm charged up or know where my next charger is in the morning okay so if there's a fast charger otherwise there's a lot of communities that have charging um do you ever use free ones do you ever get, yeah, yeah um pretty much my first trip out i used all pretty much only free and then the credit you get with the ford when you get a new maki -E, you get like 250 kilowatt hours of credit yeah you're gonna burn through that pretty yeah. quick <laughs> but i got i mean i maybe was like 20 30 bucks to get from um the midwest to the west coast that's not bad because i was charging at free places yeah and working with four dealerships and figuring out if they have level twos and kind of going from there and but, but level yeah. two still is going to take you pretty much eight hours right if you're, is, if, yeah. you're if you're down to zero or close to it yep. yeah and you gotta find them, but there's, I've seen some Harley Davidson's. There's one in Sioux Falls, I think. Really, Harley Davidson's yeah, have level they have two? have a level, no, they have a level three. Wow, that's a fast charger. So, yeah, so level one, yep. for those who don't know, is basically your wall outlet. Level two would be like uh, like your dryer outlet. Yep, like uh, your 220. Yeah, and then you're 40. looking at like, what, 30 to 40 amps, and then level three, you're way up there. Yeah, it can, it can vary, vary quite a bit. Um, I know a, one company that's wanting to have, like, level twos be able to do 20 kilowatt hour. That'd be great. So, well, well, Jay, yeah. I, I've taken up a half hour of your time. I'm really grateful. To, thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, happy trails, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, uh, check, check out tfl-studios.com for all of our news, views, and, of course, real world. And this is about as real as it gets, towing reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.